Hello, dead good crime lovers. My name is William Boyd. My new James Bond novel, Solo, is now available to buy in bookstores. Uh, I hope you very much enjoy it. Well, I think my favourite Bond novel is uh, From Russia With Love. Um, you know, the, I think everybody would agree that the, 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 that run of 12 novels, they're not all equally good. You can see Fleming's muse falling asleep from time to time. Uh, and some of the novels really catch fire and others, you know, just smolder a bit. Um, and I think the reason I like From Russia With Love so much is it's a classic spy novel. It's not got any gimmicks or any fantastical devices or, you know, plans for global domination or, you know, multinational criminal organizations. From Russia With Love is a straightforward honey trap. Um, Bond is trapped uh, by a woman uh, and it's a classic spy format and Fleming writes it really well. And it's a very dark novel. At the end of From Russia With Love, you don't know if Bond is going to survive or not. And I wonder if Fleming was thinking, shall I kill him off here? Well, I think my theory about the enduring appeal of James Bond is not so much about the individual stories in the individual novels. I think what Fleming's genius, if you like, uh, was to create a character who is very complex quite dark, quite troubled, but obviously very sure of himself at the same time, very uh, capable, and, and put him down in a world that Fleming knew very well. In other words, the world of the privileged upper-class Englishman in the 1950s. But it was a, a closed shop. It was members only. 99.9% .9 of the British population had no idea what went what the upper classes got up to. But by introducing Bond into this world and by giving Bond all his tastes, his taste in clothes, his taste in food, his taste in the kind of women he was attracted to, the kind of places he liked to visit, uh, the drinks he liked to drink, the cigarettes he liked to smoke and so on, Fleming gave Bond all these very esoteric and privileged tastes. And my feeling is that it's the sort of glamour and secrecy in the non-espionage sense of the Bond world that makes them so appealing or made them so appealing in the 50s and the 60s, but which still endure today. I mean, the world that Fleming describes, the world of, of private clubs, of exclusive villas in Jamaica, of very precise tastes and types of vodka or the kinds of cotton you like your shirt to be weaved from, it's, it's in a way, he was way ahead of his time. This sort of um, attention to detail is very contemporary. This kind of style obsession is very contemporary. But Fleming was doing it 60 years ago. And I think that's what makes the Bond novels still tremendous fun to read now, because you get a glimpse of this hidden secret world of the, of the privileged few. The, the, while you read a Bond novel, the members only sign has been removed. and us humble readers can enter it. And so I think that's what makes the, the, the book the book so enduring. And also writing my own, obviously, I wanted to perpetuate that. So, you know, I have my own um, food, drink, clothes, travel obsession. So I could, I could uh, tap into them and, and borrow from Fleming and, uh, and, you know, use that because, you know, Bond is a, is a sensualist, uh, not just in a, in a sexual sense, but in a, the kind of coffee he likes, the kind of marmalade he likes. The, the, as I say, the kind of, he doesn't like to wear lace-up shoes, for example. Bond only wears moccasins or, or loafers. Uh, these sort of details are, are, are tastes Fleming had, but when you, it makes, it makes, it makes Bond very real and it makes his world very real. So my ambition was to, to recreate that for, for Solo and to make the the textures of, of the world of Solo as, as vivid and as, as tactile as, as Fleming's novels.